Good morning. Happy New Year. I'm a dad, so I'm allowed to make lame dad jokes. Uh, it gets a little tired, but welcome to Advent One, the first Sunday of the Christian calendar's new year. We begin the year at the end, in a way, this morning with Mark's gospel, what's sometimes called the little apocalypse or the little vision of the end. So we begin with the end. Uh, that's because Advent really is about keeping in mind our destination and remembering our roots. Both of those things hold us in tension and keep us focused and full of hope and grace to meet the challenges of darkness and difficulty when they rear up for us. And so friends, we know difficulty and challenge. Another week of devastating news and difficult transitions. I am so thankful this week for council members who have struggled and wrestled with how to faithfully respond to the information we have. And that decision has been to remain open for in-person worship in a very limited capacity with our numbers capped at 15 people in person. So it is wonderful to be able to be here this morning with some of you in person. It is also wonderful um, to be able to leverage these amazing technologies so that others of you can join at home. We are asking at this time and in these days that if you can worship from home, that you do so. Uh, that's the safest way that we can guarantee that folks who need to be here in person for whatever reason, and there are various, um, that they can be here. So thank you all for your understanding and continuing to share uh, in the ministry of our Savior Lutheran Church in the ways that you have discerned are good and right uh, for you. Uh, this day and as uh, we move forward, towards, uh, through Advent and towards Christmas. So we begin this morning as it is good and wise to begin all things under the care of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, we join in a time of confession and absolution. Hmm. Try this one more time. Jason, I know I just told you that I could control this from the front, but it's looking like it's not going to let me do that. <laughs> Thank you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, 
so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Family, God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit so that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering song is King of Heaven. Friends, I'll ask that if you're at home, you sing out loud. Uh, we might not hear you, but we'll feel you uh, as we are unable to sing here in person. I'll invite uh, Lawrence Cron to share the, hymn, the uh, prayer of the day. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins. 
and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, God. now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sing together, light one candle to watch for Messiah. Light one candle to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall bring salvation to Israel. God fulfills the promise. This time I'll call on Leslie Marquardt to light our first Advent candle. And I'll add, call on Lawrence to read our first Advent blessing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You call all nations to walk in your light and to seek your ways of justice and peace. For the night is past and the dawn of your coming is near. Bless us as we light the first candle of this wreath. Rouse us from sleep that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes and welcome him into our hearts and homes, for he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. I'd like you to be seated. We. Uh... We'll read today, our psalm for today is Psalm 80, and uh, we will say it together, uh, verse by verse. I'll begin, and Lawrence will lead uh, the responses. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth. You that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. Family, this is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, Jesus said, in those days, after all that suffering, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. And the stars 
will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware. Keep alert. For you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn. Keep awake, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all. Keep awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I want to reflect today with you on Psalm 80. Many of you have know, I've shared with many of you before, that uh, for the longest time, the book of Psalms was the densest, most impenetrable book for me. Uh, still today, I, I find it stymieing sometimes. I find it hard to relate to, hard to understand. But over many years, this psalm, has become one of my favorites, if not my favorite. I just am struck to the chords of my heart by that refrain. And it is a refrain in the psalm. It happens again and again. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. But before we get to that, I just want to offer a brief word on Mark's gospel. It can't be clearer. Keep awake. Keep awake, keep awake, keep awake. Pull up your socks. Wait and watch. <laughs> you don't know when God is coming again. And, the, and so these two passages are inherently deeply related. They both, as their setting, uh, expect a group of people who are looking around for God and not finding God, who are looking around in hardship in the case of Mark's gospel, uh, following the destruction of the temple, God's home, God's resting place among the people of God by the terrible empire of Rome. And they're wondering, they're waiting, they're looking for the God of angel armies, as one Bible uh, translation puts it, to come in power and glory and restore them to power and glory and honor and might. So too, the psalmist suspects hundreds, if not a thousand years earlier, looks around in a situation and longs to see God's face, 
longs for restoration and deliverance. And each struggle to see God. Jesus says, keep awake for you don't know when the master of the house will come, will return. Of course, Jesus is speaking to disciples. But it's so important to remember when Jesus says these words. In the 13th chapter of Mark, which is to say immediately before the passion begins. And so it's not by accident that Mark records Jesus' teaching in this way. Keep awake for you don't know when the master of the house will return in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn. In the verses and chapters immediately following, we hear about Jesus gathered at table with his own disciples in the evening, sharing and adapting a historic tradition, a beautiful Passover meal, and ad adapting it now to feed his people for the interim while Jesus is gone. He institutes the Lord's Supper for us, to feed us and sustain us, especially in times when we struggle to see God. And so Jesus presents an unfamiliar face in place of this very familiar tradition. And at midnight, we hear uh, in Mark 14, 32 through 52, we hear about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane asking his closest, dearest friends to pray with him, begging them to stay awake with him. And Jesus is praying, pouring out his heart to the Father who alone knows the time, the appointed time. And Jesus pouring out his heart, Lord, if it doesn't have to be this way, Take this cup, this bitter cup from me. But trusting even more, Father, your will be done. And returning not once, but twice, not twice, but three times to his friends to be let down uh, in their grief and their exhaustion. In the darkness and the danger, they succumb to sleep. And Jesus keeps begging them, stay awake. And through them begs us, stay awake. But it's important to remember that although they don't stay awake, he doesn't write them off or cast them away. It would have been better if they stayed awake. But Jesus loves them and continues to walk with them and us even when we fall asleep. Because in Jesus, our God knows our fatigue, our despair. In Jesus, God knows what COVID fatigue must feel like. And yet Jesus begs us, stay awake. Stay sharp. Look for me and my face. Long for the will of your Father more than the will of any chief medical officer of health or premier or, or president or prime minister. Long for the will of your heavenly Father and you will see it done. And at Cockcrow, well, in Mark 14, 72, we hear, and we know well, what happens at Cockcrow. Jesus, most fiery, passionate, reliable and unreliable disciple, Peter, betrays and denies him, not once, but three times. And it would have been better if Peter hadn't done that. And yet Jesus knew he would. And we know from other scriptures that Jesus comes alongside Peter later. Alongside his shame and frustration and embarrassment. And Jesus restores Peter. Jesus makes clear that he knows and understands what Peter has done wrong and how Peter has failed. He doesn't make excuses for those failures, for those sins. But he forgives them. And he restores Peter to a place of honor beside him. And in doing so, Peter does that, uh, Jesus does that for 
you and for me. Forgiving us and telling us, go out, look for my face, long for the will of your heavenly Father, and feed my sheep, your brothers and sisters. And prepare to be surprised by who I will show you to be my brothers and sisters. For you don't know when the master will return in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn. At dawn. At the end of Mark's gospel, in chapter 16, verse 2, we hear what happens at dawn. When the time of the night is at an end and the sun rises again, and as that heavenly star rises again, so too the Son of Man, Jesus the Christ, rises from death into new life and in doing so opens wide the door. Having destroyed the doors and gates of hell and shame forever, opens wide the door for us to walk through following our Master, our Lord, our, our friend and Savior, Jesus, into abundant and eternal life. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. I want to uh, ask Jason to give us our next slide here. This should be a familiar image. It stands uh, large in our sanctuary. It is called the King of Kings Mosaic. Uh, I'm going to forget the name of the artist just now. He's a local artist from St. Albert. Myron would know it. He could type it into the uh, chat here. Help me out. Um, and what we know and love about this image is that the face of Jesus is constructed carefully out of historical rulers and leaders, uh, some great by worldly definitions, many great by other definitions, all of them good, not perfect, not without sin, but good in God's sight through Jesus' work on the cross and through that redemption journey through life, through death into life, through the night into the morning, showing us the way. I wanted to show you this image and remind you of it this morning because in here we have people like John A. MacDonald who did wonderful things for our country also did some deeply shameful things. Uh, we have people like Caesar, Augustus. We have uh, people like Adolf Hitler, who did in some people's minds great things for his country, and also some deeply shameful things. I lift up those three examples in particular, because those are the powerful History-making rulers, those are the images of what a king or ruler looks like. A God who would be like the ruler of angel armies. Those are the figures that we have for God too often that the psalmist has in mind when he says, for the kingdom of Israel, for the people of God, restore us, O God, come back in power and honor, and strength, and beat up our enemies. Lay them low. In that psalm, we hear not only about the restorative, saving power of the face of God, we also hear about the judgmental and wrathful power of God. We hear, restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. But we also hear, in this psalm and in Isaiah, which we didn't read today, but is assigned, Isaiah 64, we hear a plea to God to let God's face and countenance shine on the enemies 
of Israel and so destroy them. But in Jesus, God redeems that image. In Jesus, God surprises us and dares us to imagine differently what power and authority and salvation and restoration can look like. Not a never-ending cycle of tit-for-tat, eye-for-eye, destruction, And restoration only to destroy our enemies so that they can come back at us. It's a never-ending turf war. And Jesus has a different way. And Jesus says um, in the days right before he is betrayed and crucified, Jesus promises his followers all of this will come to pass before this generation even passes away. Which seems surprising because We look in our current day and we long to see God's face, but we don't always. At least we think we must not see because we're in the middle of a pandemic and there are wars uh, still on the earth and there is racial tension and unrest and there's a wrestling with our shameful history. So many difficulties. There are people, children in our own city that will not eat today, let alone Christmas Eve. And it's hard to know how God could be present. So long as we hold on to this image of a face of God who only looks like us and ours and who must operate in power and authority. Jesus crucified, and that's why... The king of kings picture here is so important because we see our king of kings wearing not golden crown. Times because of sheer familiarity, we've grown up. With Christ crucified, but we must. wrestle daily and this is the gift Around the time of my confirmation, as a 13 year old. And it's a young man steering a ship, uh, barely, barely more than a boy. And on the shoulder is a very Nordic looking Jesus. Long, kind of blonde hair flowing, no beard, very white skin. And it it was a source of great comfort to me. And still is. It's a connection not only to God for me, but to my grandmother, who was such a champion of faith in my life. And so it's a good image of God present. But it's not the only image. Both our gospel today and our psalm and so much of Scripture says absolutely Hold on to the historic ways that you have seen my face. Hold on to the stories of faith about how I delivered my people, how I created them in my own image, 
how I delivered them from slavery into freedom, how I restored again and again uh, my people from oppression and slavery, but always remember that I am the God of freedom. And so never settle just for those familiar faces. Jesus shows us always to look and watch for how God is operating in our midst to surprise us about just how present, just how active, just how willing God is to enter into every part of this broken and sin-soaked world of ours. And so I just want to look at this image again with you, if you could share it there, Jason. Uh, and look at all of the familiar and unfamiliar faces of Jesus. At the top, uh, I'm looking at it left. I think it's showing up on the left of your screen. This is a historical recreation uh, by scientists based on uh, the kind of genetic group that Jesus would have come from in that part of the world coming from Nazareth of Galilee and for what people um, in that region would have looked like roughly in that time. That's a historical recreation of what we think Jesus may have looked like uh, in person. It's way different. If you go down exactly down on the left, two images, uh, that's a lot closer to the very Nordic looking Jesus that I grew up with. Again, one is not superior to the other. But neither are any one of these images able to fully capture who God is for God's people. So that's the discipline that we're in, in a day where we're wrestling with institutional oppression and racism. That's, a, that's the thing that we're wrestling with as a church, trying to take seriously the prophetic wisdom of a movement like Black Lives Matter. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus could look like you, but not just you, not just like me, but like everyone. And so as we go forth from worship today, let us wait, let us watch, let us wonder full of hope, reflecting on the glory of God revealed to us in Jesus crucified and resurrected. Let us go out looking for Jesus in our midst and ready to feed God's sheep, to bless our brothers and sisters and to know and to believe even when we don't know that they are all our brothers and sisters. For in Christ, there is not us and them. There is simply us. Amen. Amen.
Thank you all at home for bearing with us uh, through some of those sound issues. Thank you to those who work quickly and frantically behind the scenes to, uh, to sew those up and, and help our worship to continue. Friends, our worship continues as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty of the Father. God from God, light from light, through God from true God, be God not made. into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O God of power and might, Tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world, to these weary people. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed. 
with welcome for those who are excluded and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, for those in poverty and all types of despair. We pray for those facing food insecurity, especially those who will gather later today around the building of our Savior for the Ormsby Care and Share food distribution. We pray for the people of Emmanuel at Inner City Pastoral Ministries, for the people of Hope Mission as they endure an outbreak of COVID-19 on top of all else. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We give you thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing. Those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. And we lift up before you, Lord, those you've placed in our circles of care. With Wayne and Charmaine, we lift up together Nancy. We pray for your endurance and patience and hope for Tommy, for Howie, for Carrie and Curtis, for Sharon and Joan, for Heidi, for Violet and Henry, for Anne and Eric, for Daniel and Diane. We pray for Suzanne and Rebecca and Curtis. We lift up to you David and Amelia, Caleb and Karen, Kim and Viola, Rose and Rick. We pray your continued healing and protection over Kelsey and Matthew, over Chris, over Riley, Tyler and Donnie, Murray and Susan, for Lee, for Herman and Yvette. We pray for Kevin and Avery, for Angela, We lift up those who grieve. We pray for Tammy, for Reen, for Kathy and Evan, Christian and Nathaniel. We pray for Toby and Leslie, for Deborah and Mick. We pray for the Moore family and the Mann family, for the Gibsons, O oh Lord, in this time when so many grieve and cry out longing to see your face, 
We pray with the faithful throughout the ages, restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us that we may be saved. We give you thanks, Jesus, that you have shone. And you shine still that all might be saved. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is, great. is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Family, now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you, Martha. Peace be with you, Deborah and Wanda. Peace be with you, Toby and Leslie. Peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you, Charmaine and Jason. Peace be with you at home. Thank you, uh, Myron, for saving me. Uh, Louis Lavoie is the name of that artist. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Blessings, Noreen and Myron. Peace to uh, Daniel and Diane. Peace be with you. Blessings, Alex. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Don and Melody, Denise and Eldon, Chris and Laura and Eric. Blessings and peace, Jack Horan wins the prize for joining us from furthest away today. I believe they're joining us from Mexico. Blessings and peace to you, Joanne and Norm. Peace and blessings, Jonathan, joining us from the West Coast. Peace, Karen. Blessings and peace, Linda and Gord. Marla, peace be with you. Peace be with you, Ron and Shauna. Wayne, Will and Amanda. Peace be with you, Zephira and Josiah and Solomon. Peace be with you, Rita. Family, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it's our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see, only thou art Family, in the night in which he was betrayed, 
our Lord Jesus received humble bread. which he made holy as he gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken and given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after the meal, he received a humble cup, which he made holy as he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new promise poured out in my blood, which is shed for you, and indeed for all people, for all faces, for the forgiveness of sin. Therefore, do this for the remembrance of me. And so gathered into one by the promised and received Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Family, taste and see that the Lord is here. That the Lord is good. Thank you to those of you at home who've already reached out to receive communion elements. We will arrange that following the service today. If anyone else would like to complete their uh, participation in this liturgy of Holy Communion today in that way, please just reach out through the chat or by calling uh, the church or Pastor Phil directly. Deborah, this is the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, broken and shed for you. Amen.
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep us all together in his grace until his return in glory. Amen. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait in this meal, you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Family, receive God's blessing that is for you. Almighty God, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, who is sometimes hard to see, but who is most assuredly present with you this day and always bless you both now and forevermore amen are there any announcements for the community today i know that uh, alex i think has one so alex if you are able to uh, turn your camera on um, we're happy to just hear your voice but it's sometimes easier to follow if people can see you Hi, Alex. Um, so we are one sec, Alex, if, I'm just yep. going to ask and see if Jason can spotlight you so that we can see you. Okay, go ahead, Alex. Okay, so we are doing our best to do the Christmas hampers this year. Um, things will look a little bit different than they have in the past, but we do still need as much support as we can get raising money. I think we made our goal 25 hampers. So it's $200 to support a hamper. Um, and again, any donation we will gladly accept as well. We are collecting gifts. Um, we are not having a wrap party or anything like that. So if you choose to buy a gift for, for a child, um, the price is about 25 to $30, a new gift. If it requires batteries, please include them. And this year, I need you to wrap them for us and put a little sticker on there to say um, the age so that we know where it can go to. Um, but basically, any help we can get, it is already coming up close to when we need gifts and money in by. So um, my phone number and everything is on the in the memo, I think. So you can get in contact with me if you'd like to help in any way. Um, we will be doing shopping on the last Saturday before Christmas. I think it's the 19th at 4 p.m. at the Windermere Walmart. So any help would be really appreciated. Beautiful. Thanks, uh, Alex. And because the uh, situation is constantly changing, stay tuned for more information on exactly how that shop will work and how delivery will work this year. Be based on the same basic theme, but maybe uh, with some more precautions and a few changes. Uh, so sticking with the theme of Advent being God breaking in and unfamiliar, yet wonderful ways. Uh, so this ministry continues. And it's harder than ever in some ways to raise money, um, but also more necessary and needed than perhaps uh, ever before. And so uh, please give what you can, whether that's time, uh, talent, prayer, always important. And uh, those of you who can give financially, we sure appreciate that too. Uh, we are celebrating birthdays this week together with Wayne Blatz. Uh, I want you all to know that I have already given Wayne his birthday bumps for this year and, and probably the next 10 years um, on behalf of you all. And we're also celebrating with Rebecca Thompson on December the 3rd and with Joanne Waltho today, November 29th. Uh, so uh, I'm going to ask Jason to play the recording of the Smith family singing Happy Birthday. Happy 
birthday, Wayne, Rebecca, Joanne. Are there any other announcements for the community this day? Again, if you uh, would like to receive the elements of Holy Communion today, uh, please just reach out through the chat or by calling the church office or Pastor Phil directly. Uh, and we hope to see you soon. Friends, uh, our sending song is Give Me Jesus. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.